Hey, cool those temperatures and chillax because we are back for one week later. We're talking Frozen Empire from Ghostbusters. We got a lot of goodies, a lot of things to talk about. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you do all those fun things like stick around for the whole video and see what happens. Is Madam Web highly involved in this film? You will find out. At least out. in this review, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joe Dub. This is Firemaster Bill. If you've seen the movie, you get it, and you that's why you clicked on this review. Well, let's not waste any time. Let us talk about Ghostbusters. Da -da 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 -da. Um, what was your Frozen Empire? So, what was your first reaction to it before we hop into it? Well, there was a lot of different plot points in this movie, mm -hmm. including a ripoff of Casper the Friendly Ghost. Yes. Where so. uh, they have the friend that might be more than a friend, depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. But not enough was more of a friend to get past censors in the foreign countries. Yeah. All but, right. Well, yeah. let's hop. Mm -hmm. But yes, they there's a Casper reference, which we'll get into much more later. noticeable, especially considering Emily Lynn kind of looks like Christina Ricci, as you pointed hey, out when we watched this thing. <laughs> the Spangler family returns to the iconic New York City. Firehouse, where the original Ghostbusters have taken Ghostbusting to the next level. When the discovery of an ancient artifact unleashes an evil force, the Ghostbusters, old and new, must unite to protect their home and save the world from a second ice age. All right, first thing, what worked? For me, what worked was the amalgamation of the two Ghostbuster factions. That was really cool. That's why I use it for the thumbnail, because that was a really cool moment. Um, I feel like it's kind of weird that on the cover, the main protagonist is Egon's granddaughter, because she's the one most like him, and she's not really on the cover. So it's like, ooh, what are you doing here? Uh, I know that the young the grandson, he is basically a Finn wolf-haired, Trevor, he is probably one of the more noticeable names here in the film franchise, other than the original Ghostbusters, because he's in a little show called Stranger Things, which is a massive pop culture success. But uh, he was hardly utilized in this one, unlike the first one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He was kind of like a third wheel. It was just like, yeah, and, and, and Trevor's here, you know? It was like, I fixed the car. Okay. So... Um, what really worked for me in this film was the mythos that they built for this villain. Now I know, you know, everybody knows Gozer, the Gozerian, everybody kind of leans on that one ghost for the main, uh, Ghostbusters lore, but there's a lot of stuff out in the world that spooks everybody. And though I'm sure this is made up and not a real, I'm, I'm proving wrong. Uh, Billy, uh, yeah, Firemaster Bill, or anybody down there, you can comment below and then rip me a new one. Let me know if I'm wrong, but pretty sure this is a hundred percent, a thousand percent made up. And this uh, deity that comes up, very cool design, got a Slender Man plus the devil thing going on. I really enjoyed the villain, I think that's probably one of the things that worked the best. Um, and I really appreciated the little claymation they did to explain his time um, during the Babylonian era, I believe it was. So those are some things that really worked. Uh, I really thought the uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost love interests that was going on there worked really well with Melody. Melody was really um, a nice little throw into the series. I thought it worked. Uh, pretty well with her because she's like your typical like I don't know if you remember Daria from MTV 
Like I got really big Dario. Oh, that's Christina Ritchie, by the way. <laughs> Not the melody from the Ghostbusters, but yeah, I really got that that vibe from her, like uh, an angst teen and her trying to solve her story that why she didn't move on. I thought that was a nice little subplot. Uh, but there was there was a lot of stuff that worked really well, including uh, the mayor being Walter Peck. Yes, this man has no dick. <laughs> I thought that that was a really wild turn of events. Like, oh shit, that guy's the mayor. He's going to give them such a hard time. And throughout the movie, he was, and it worked so well. And in the end, because of his own PR, he had to be like, no, 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 I, I hired them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are some of the things that worked for me. What worked for you, Billy Boy? Hold on, I got to point out one thing. I, I missed when we watched it, but I heard about this from other people. Apparently, what? when the mayor is getting interviewed by the press and set, taking credit for calling them. Someone in the crowd yells dickless. Yes. I did not. You didn't really catch that? I missed that. I did not catch that. That's hilarious. Yeah, I heard it. I, think I was waiting for some... I think it was Bill Murray that yelled dickless. <laughs> Maybe. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty dickless. But yeah, no, that was, that was a funny moment. All right, so what worked for you, Billy Boy? All right, I'm going to say Ernie Hudson having uh, the... Uh, ghost research center and kind of industrializing the Ghostbusters. I kind of like the idea that like one of them actually was successful and they weren't all sad sacks that completely lost everything with their lives and ended up like depressed. Like we got the impression in the last movie. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I felt like Dan Aykroyd's character was a little depressed, but we never really got much of Bill Murray's character. He only showed up in the end of the first one. Yes. And also one thing I will say, I totally, if you told me that Bill Murray just had the flask on set and that was not actually part of the script, that was just like him doing that as a blooper that they stuck in the movie, I'd be like, I totally believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it still here? Oh, yes, it is. And he takes a swig. That that was yeah. the part I really enjoyed. Yeah. And there's also a part where, for some reason, like he's wearing sunglasses for no reason whatsoever, just one scene, and then takes them off. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, when did he put them on and why? The <laughs> like, yeah. you could tell, like, he was just completely screwing with the continuity director. Yeah, for sure. I also did kind of like the Casper storyline between Melody and uh, Phoebe. Mm. Although it's because it was like, they were actually good actors. I liked uh, like them and I was like, I know what's happening. It's predictable but they have good things they're good chemistry yeah yeah another thing i really liked before we move on was um the cameo from Patton oswald uh living his best life being able to be uh i can make that cameo being in the ghostbusters movies and he was in the library i thought that was a lot of fun and basically they just fill in the backstory of this thing because it when it starts off you're you get this 1900s um fire department going in to put out a fire but it was actually a frozen steam and because these aristocrats kind of mess with it like a, a nod to ivo shandor from the first film um and they were just messing around and got this device and they were trying to unleash it and then it backfired and everything so i thought that was pretty cool um and i i kind of like the world building that they were doing but they did the same thing in ghostbusters 2016 i, I think it was where they had the the haunted mansion with the ghost in it and the guy from the office explaining the whole thing. So I, I thought that that was a, a kind of like a, a swifted way of merging the two um, universes together because they, they kind of did the same thing there. Um, I guess that's all that worked for me. Let us go into didn't. Now, one of the things I'm going to give a shout out to our good buddy, Jason Roy Gaston, who completely hated this movie. It was the bottom. When it comes to ranking all the Ghostbusters, this is on the bottom of his list. I wholeheartedly disagree. I think this was probably better than 2016. Um, but one and two are still very strong with Afterlife being third and this would be fourth. You know, I that's my ranking. I, I didn't think it was terrible at all. 
Um, there were a lot of fun moments and there were a lot of really interesting concepts that they dived into, including um, there was a study regarding the actual existence of ghosts where they are measuring on a, a molecular level to see if they can. Yeah. See if they can. And it's not like I, I wrote the thing. I, I just read no, it. No, but it's just an interesting read. I've, I'm glad you sent me the article. It's a yeah, that's, article about ghost particles. Yeah. They, they basically, one of the concepts that they had was that you can, an inanimate objects get possessed by a ghost particle. And that's something that they did in Ghostbusters too. And because the painting ego, uh, the Carpathian Vigo, excuse me, Vigo, the Carpathian was in the painting and he was haunted, haunted an inanimate object. And I've heard a million and one stories of different inanimate objects being haunted. Like the, the doll from the, the conjuring movies. What's that doll? Annabelle. Annabelle. Yeah. The Annabelle series and the cut from the conjuring um, universe. Like you have those type of, of synapses where the particles, the, the, the soul of the person that departed is put into those things. And they made a whole big piece out of this. They didn't really get, they got into the science a little bit, but this article really dives into it stating that, you know, this might exist and they're currently working on that. And it's very fascinating. And it's part of the reason why I like Ghostbusters so much, because when we, we don't know what happens when we die, their beliefs are that we got either go to heaven or hell. You know, if you are Neil deGrasse Tyson, you might not believe in heaven and hell, but you believe that you will go into the flora and fauna of the planet itself. Uh, some people believe like they mentioned in Ghostbusters that uh, your essence, because matter cannot be created or destroyed goes into the universe, the infinite, vast universe that's all around us, all-encompassing, all-knowing, and is beyond our understanding. So I thought that that part was cool, but what didn't work was the kind of vague understanding that they gave. It was just so quick. Oh, yeah, by the way, we can scan it and suck out the ghost, and then we move on. And we're like, can you give it a little bit more like nod? Let's let's get into that a little bit more. What also didn't work for me was I know I love this actor. He's really a great guy. He, I find him to be very funny. And he was the main comic relief because this is a lot more serious than the other Ghostbuster movies. But uh, Kamal Najani was just kind of like a goofy, as you said uh, before recording, he was the Harold Ramis. Of no, he's a Rick Moranis. Uh, Rick Moranis. Yeah, no, yeah, Harold Ramis was Egon. He was amazing. No, he was a Rick Moranis of this. And I, I kind of agree with that. It, I liked Rick Moranis in the original, which, uh, the, as I told you, the role was actually supposed to go to John Candy. But uh, John, I think, turned it down, I want to say, because he was filming another movie and Rick took it. And I think this is part of the reason why Rick took off, because Rick is so good at playing like a a goofy nerdy type of guy that's really really smart and he was like that accountant that you couldn't knock um but so i thought that was kind of cool uh another thing that didn't work for me was the paul rudd he just was like meh eh. and it's sad because like they just disney just cancels um ant-man 4 not gonna happen so that that universe is dead and now he's got ghostbusters but does he? You know what I mean? Like they really need to. I think that the if they make another one, which I'm sure they will, because you know we'll get into the the numbers that they did for this movie, which I find to be very interesting. But um, they've got like they've got to really focus on the new generation and move on from the old. They like Ray can be a consultant, Winston can be a consultant, but they don't need to get involved. In I th in my in my personal opinion, I love all three of them. It's hard to not see Ghostbusters movies without them, but yeah, they got to move on. And you know, though she wasn't on the cover, <laughs> she was the main character in this movie. And it's so weird that it was like, why they're spending a lot of time on her, and and her brother was just kind of like in the background, not really doing much. And I thought though her character is interesting, but her trying to like become a ghost was a weird choice. And especially if you're a ghost buster, I, I didn't really care much for that whole 
uh, subplot. It wasn't like she was trying to be with the ghost girl. It was just, you know, well, random. That could be debatable. I could definitely see like a little Rosalind and Juliet storyline thing kind of going there, which, mm. well, is still one of the things I'll I'll go into what I don't like about this movie. Well, of course, I'm agreeing with you. Paul Rudd was painful in this movie. Mm -hmm. Painfully, yeah. like, anti-humor on fun. Yeah, it was weird. Because he's usually a funny guy. Yeah. I mean, I loved all the times when he was on Conan and showing that clip of Mac and me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, also, like, the kids from Afterlife almost all got sidelined. Yeah. Like, like, podcast was non-existent. I don't know why he showed up in this one. Because he showed up as Dan Aykroyd's like web camera guy. web camera guy for his podcast show yeah and he had like a youtube show where he just smashes his antiques if they're not right. haunted which i thought was also a dumb decision like why would you smash the antique you just keep moving it on i was like was he trying to make him gallagher or something i honestly don't know and yeah it was well, actually it's funny we like so much time has gone by that we didn't even realize that was the same podcast you t i remember in the theater you were like did they recast him yeah, I thought it wasn't the same actor. It turns out it was. It was still Mr. K His name's K Logan Kim. Yep. And, and, and he just grew up. They get big, children. Oh, yeah, because five years have passed since the last movie because they yeah. shot pre-COVID and then they didn't release it till after COVID. Right, right. And what's funny is he was in um, the he's in the new uh, Walking Dead. He's um, the kid that uh, Maggie and um Glenn half he's the he's their kid in the Walking Dead so that's his, oh. yeah the new cool. it's called Walking Dead Dead City he's in five episodes of that I gotta watch that <laughs> it's it's pretty boring just to <laughs> not uh, what I expected yeah well that was also one of the things with the, the well this movie there's a lot of stuff that happens but not a lot of stuff that well Got setting time to breathe. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it seems like there's a lot of talk for okay, this is going to happen. And it's like exposition to the point that you're like, start a movie already, pick a topic and run with it. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna do the Wiley e. Coyote chase movie with the uh, stupid brother chasing uh, Slimer? Please don't. I mean, that was actually painful, and I actually hated that part whatsoever. Really. Didn't yeah, like I like Slimer, yeah. but like it was funny once, but they did it like two to three times, and it's like the rule of threes only works if the joke is funny. Mm. If the joke doesn't land, drop it and move on. Wow. Uh, also, I mean, I hate to say this, but can we queue up a little bit? Because I talked to my friends about this thing and I have a hot take that will put us uh -oh. like it's going to cause all sorts of chaos. It is like the most unpopular theory that a statement or opinion that I have on this movie of all time. Go for it. It'll put even uh, Jason's opinion to be, uh, shame with how uh -oh. bad this opinion is. Okay, go for it. Madam Webb was funnier than Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. <laughs> for a disaster of biblical proportion. Well, what do you mean? You believe, Mr. Pecker. My name is Peck. Or you could accept the fact that this city is headed for a disaster of biblical proportion. Well, what do you mean, biblical? Uh, what he means is Old Testament, Mr. Yes. Mayor. Real wrath of God type stuff. Exactly. Fire and brimstone coming down from the skies. Rivers and seas boiling. Forty years of darkness, earthquakes, volcanoes. The dead rising from the grave. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Enough, I get the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there, there was no it, it's hard to find quotables in this one there's not like not like stuff that you're gonna want like ghostbusters one and even ghostbusters two had so many good quotables that you still quote to this day you know 40 some odd years later this one the last one the last one had a couple but this one not so much yeah there was and, like no good dialogue that was like Oh, that's going to be the quotable one. That's going to be like the line that anybody's going to say. Yeah. And also, I hate to say it, but like most of the cast isn't even memorable for this franchise. Oh. 
I mean, the mom, I was like, she was one of Thanos' minions in an Infinity War. Yeah, Proxima Midnight, baby. And Paul Rudd is Ant-Man. McKenna Grace mm-hmm. was like almost every child actor or character that they needed whenever they needed a little blonde-haired girl. Yeah. She was even in Captain Marvel. Yeah. And I am one of the few people that acknowledge this, but Celeste O'Connor is in this movie, and I said, there's Maddie from Madam Web. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. you really leaning on Madam Web, man. Unless, <laughs> I know, I hate to do that, but I'm not going to call her Lucky from the Ghostbusters franchise. No, I'm going to gonna... call her Maddie from Madam Web. She's Maddie Franklin from Madam Web. Oh, man. <laughs> Just like how you, Jackman, is always going to be Wolverine. No, it, it's okay, O'Connor will always be Maddie Franklin from Madam Web. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into reception. All right, so this is where we're basically getting the rundown of how it did. So it did pretty well, but um, it mirrored the first Afterlife movie. Did the exact same numbers at the exact same days. If you actually go to INDB, it Friday night, 16 million, sun, Saturday night, 17 and then sunday 11 the other one did 12 so that was the only real difference but it still made almost the exact same amount of money so this will probably land somewhere on the soft side of 100 million and then had a 100 million budget so they really need to talk to uh the guys that make godzilla on how to really properly do budgets and when it comes to the ratings uh, this one did not get the type of um, love that the other ones did. And it's kind of weird. It's like, I don't know. I, I didn't hate it to the point where I would spend the time to bash it online. So it's kind of weird to me, you know? Yeah, I mean, it existed. I mean... I'm not going to say I loved it, but I'm not going to say I hated it. It's going to be like, eh, it was a movie. It was a movie. So, I mean. And I am just thankful that they didn't do something I was afraid that they were going to do. What's that? When she started playing chess with the ghost. Oh, that's right. I I was like, oh, God, don't tell me they're going to bring back Harold Ramis' ghost. Let the man rest in peace. No, no, no. Harold Ramis goes passed on when they beat Gozer, so he's good. But I was afraid. I was like, they're not going to do that again. They're not going to do that again. (laughs) They didn't do it again. Don't worry. And there's uh, the girl from Madam Web way in the back. (laughs) But yeah, this one got some rough reviews. Uh, The audience still dug it. 84% still fresh there. But the critics... 1,000 reviews. Yeah. And the critics, ugh, total... Total disaster, 43%. Uh, in the world of Ghostbusters, it's, you know, not not so good. Not so good. Um, Afterlife, as you can see here, fresh on both ends. The critics and the fans just adore this movie. Uh, but I'm curious. How did 2016 do? Yeah, that's what I was just going to do. Let's see. Let's look it up. Ghostbusters 2016. I think it's called Answer the Call, but yeah, 2016. So Ghostbusters 2 got 55, so it did better than the other one. Oh, I don't don't see it. That's weird. There we go. Ghostbusters 2016. It got wow, 74. So the audience hated it. It was flipped. The fans love the fans hated it, but the critics loved it. What an interesting turn of events there. So 74% fresh, but for the audience, 100,000. So I really think this is a lot of like He Man women haters, though, on this score. I don't because I don't think this one was that terrible. 
you know it was just like that the way they cameoed the original ghostbusters didn't make any sense that's what my main gripe of that movie was but uh the number one original ghostbusters way way back in 1984 is probably still ranked the highest 95 88 yeah still the best simply the best dun, 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 dun. better than all the rest anyway a uh, lot of fun in this movie despite a lot of the backlash uh from that and uh let us get our final glance and head out It's hard to live up to a franchise that's so beloved uh, from its first film. And people may think that it's kind of like uh, milking the cow, if you will. But I like the mythos that they build in Ghostbusters. I find it fascinating. Uh, there's a lot of weird stuff that's been built around New York City. And I feel like they're conduits to the other realms uh, when you look at them. A lot of that art deco, like the Bryant Park Hotel and the places in the library kind of make sense for weird stuff and when you deal with weird stuff who are you gonna call <laughs> i really appreciate this film and i don't despise it as much as some folks do but you know i hope we're prepared to pass the torch i feel like the two the guy uh with the glasses the works for winston I think um, he. I think he'll be the he, new mentor. Yeah, James Alcaster. He played Lars Hartfield, the British guy. I think he, Winston and Dan, could like kind of just hop in and and spread some some good cheer and get some information and and pass, you know, just pass the torch. Annie Potts should still be a manager. I love Annie Potts. She was awesome in this, and then just like cameos from. Bill Murray, because I'm sure he's probably over it. But uh, yeah, that's that's my final glance, Billy. I'm just still kind of curious to see like this uh, movie was not terrible, not great, but there's stuff I missed the first time around. I might actually see it again. There you go. It's worth it. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us here at the to be seen world we got some doctor who love coming at you from the console room be sure to join us every tuesday and if you missed it you can catch the replay on the main page be sure to check us out of the captain's quadrant every thursday night oh no this is updated we're at fridays now 9 p.m i gotta change that and of course pop culture spread uh check out our boy that did all the intros and the bumpers very cool guy and our good buddy aj arsini it is wrestlemania season it's time to point. It's time to hit up AJ Orsini and get all those wrestling informations embedded in your brain. I'm Joe Dove, and of course, this was Firemaster Bill. We will be with you next time for Spaceman. Want to do that one? Yeah, sure. All right, Spaceman. We'll catch you then. See you guys. <laughs>